take a look at some of the hottest gigs in college football. Now, there's been it. a lot of shuffling in positions and coaches this year, and obviously a lot of people moved because there were some hot hot openings in yes. college football and a couple of those names will be at the top of this list so at number 10 we're going ahead and take it now to the university of miami that is number 10 so they have had obviously a lot of success especially back in the 80s and the 90s not so much as of late although they did have a good year this year tom why is this position so hot because it's still the you it's the you <laughs> like that that's what it is deep down in the end and I think what's other what's a great thing about this Miami team is that you know if you're an NFL fan and you love the NFL draft, everyone's favorite NFL draft class of all time was the 2000-2001 Miami team that ended up having like 15 to 16 NFL players on it, all massive players: Ed Reed, Vince Wilfork, to name a couple, Frank Gore, Willis McGahee were on those teams. Just tons and tons of players. Uh, Takeo Spikes, to name a couple more. So some insanely talented classes that come out of the University of Miami. And I think the prospect for this program going forward is also so high. I think they are going to take advantage in a big way of Florida State. Them missing a year or two in recruiting is massive for Miami. Them getting Lorenzo Lingard this year, the top prospect, at least offensively, in the state of Florida, was huge for that program. And I think that... What they've been able to do this year and last year, kind of rekindling the program, is so huge for them in recruiting. I love to see the U back on top. Hopefully they stay there, because I think, I think football is a little bit more fun when Miami's playing well. Also, I think when we look at the coaching spots in general, where the ability to recruit is a big deal, mm -hmm. and the Hurricanes have that. They should always be in the top 10 of recruiting because they're in Miami. And one more thing about Miami, though. One thing, uh, the reason we have them number 10, I think is the volatility of the program. Because when they're good, they're great. But when they're bad, Oh my Al God, Golden. they're bad. And yes, Al Golden, thank you. Nine conference titles all in the Big East. Obviously a history of excellence for this Miami Hurricanes team. They finally made it to an ACC championship game this year, and then they forgot to show, show up, up, so they still mm -hmm. made one. So there you go, the Miami Hurricanes in a nutshell. All right, moving on to number nine, we have the Florida State Seminoles. They have 18 conference titles, been playing since 1947 with a bowl record of 27 to 16. As I mentioned earlier, Willie Taggart jumped at the opportunity to coach the Seminoles this season. And Sam's surprised. And it makes sense. I think it's funny that Florida State here, for, for the most part, it was it had been two coaches. It had been Bobby Bowden and Jimbo Fisher. Now they have Willie Taggart also in the mix as well. So Taggart has high expectations. If he doesn't live up to those FSU expectations of at least competing for national titles, might be a short-lived tenure there. I couldn't agree more, Tom. And we talked a lot about our meetings in this, kind of going back to the, that, the fact that the Florida State kind of coaching tree has been two guys, been Bobby Bowden and it's been Jimbo Fisher. Willie Taggart, there's a... I, I, there's a lot of pressure on him right now. I think in mm -hmm. order to to keep up with the past two coaches, but also on the recruiting trail. I mean, I understand that UCF isn't the greatest program in the world, either is USF, but there are a lot of other players now in the state of Florida. Dan Mullen now with Florida, obviously bringing them back into competition. Mark Drick in Miami. Now USF and UCF are actually stealing players. You forgot about the best one of all, the FIU. lane train. The lane train. So FAU. It, it, FAU, excuse me. So I think that there's a lot more competition in the state of Florida right now. So Willie Tech job. This is not an easy Florida State program that he's taking over. The pressure is there. We know the reason Jimbo Fisher, one of the reasons he left is because the football facilities weren't what he wanted them to be. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of factors at play with this Florida State team. I think a lot of it is based off of history, but I think their future is a big question mark right now. I think Florida State's in for a couple years of turmoil. All right, at number eight on the top coaching spots in college football, we have the USC Trojans, and now their trophy room is stacked, yes. you guys. So 38 conference titles, national titles in 67, 72, 74, and 78, and six Heisman Trophy winners. I'm a little surprised they're not higher on this list. I think there's been some recent volatility, and I, mm -hmm. I think in general, actually, as, as you go through these, these lists of the schools here in the top ten, there's a kind of a pattern of, Maybe they don't always keep the coaches in the same way that you would think, and there isn't the sustained success because of the parody, the, the, the parody in college football. But I think that the P. Carroll, John Robinson era, and, and the uh, and the John McKay era as well, those are three great coaches that did fantastic work for USC. And I think eight is about as low as they can actually end up going. I also think the reason we we have them, I think the re, one of the reasons they're on this list as well. I think if you're a quarterback for USC. 
you're all of a sudden like the best player on the Yankees. Like, for, remember John David Booty was like a really big name in college for a while. Great man. Matt, Matt Liner was, you know, an awful NFL quarterback who's escalated because he played at USC. Barkley the same way. Cody Kessler ended up being a third round pick. So it, the noodle arm, Cody what, Kessler. Exactly. So what USC is able to do and able to vaunt the names of their players up into draft stocks, into kind of the the halls of college football lore is pretty impressive. And also, shout out to Reggie Bush, who just recently retired from the NFL, one of the greatest college players of all time. He was so much fun to watch. He, he was, was so great. He was a cheat code. And I think that's one of the, another reason why we have him up there. If you're great for USC, it, it is almost as values being great for literally any other school. A great player in USC might just be the most popular player in the entire country. I think USC and a common theme for a lot of these programs in general that we're going to discuss here, they have the brand. Yes, the brand Hashtag is there. brand exists for <laughs> USC. All right, USC checking in at number eight in our top coaching spots in college football. At number seven, we have the Fighting Irish. They have seven Heisman Trophy winners, which is tied for all time, and also saw a lot of success in four national titles, and excuse me, in a seven year span. It's Amazing. The, it's the team that everyone hates. And I think another thing that we've seen with this Notre Dame franchise the past couple of franchise, excuse me, Notre Dame program in the past couple of years, when you beat Notre Dame, Everyone all of a sudden thinks that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. After Miami beat Notre Dame, myself, you know, everyone here at uh, Chat Sports, even Paul Feinbaum bought into the Miami Hurricanes, and then all of it just <laughs> gone. Like my, it very much proved that all right, Notre Dame's just not that good. If you kind of put the Notre Dame roster on a different school name, they probably aren't ranked that high. So they still pounded USC. They, they did pound USC. I still think at the same time, you know, it's Notre Dame. It's probably the most recognizable program in college football. It's the Cowboys of college football. They have the biggest fan base. You know, it, if, it's Notre Dame. If we had done this list a couple of years ago, maybe a decade ago, Notre Dame would rank higher. And there was a point for a long period of time, thanks in part to, to having that NBC deal, Notre Dame was the team in college football. Yep. Like, if you were a Midwestern fan, you cheered for Notre Dame. Like, that's kind of how it was. They, they were just everywhere. And I think they've actually been hurt a little bit by the changing landscape of college football. Agreed. Recruiting is now is now national for all the programs. They're able to go, and Ohio State can go, into, can go into Florida, can go into Georgia, can go into California, where Notre Dame used to be able to do that. All the programs can now do that. There's more publicity overall. Yeah, and Notre Dame is on TV every week, so is every other power program. Yeah, and I also think that, you know, you mentioned the change in college football landscape. I think that the uprising of a team like Clemson has really hurt the Notre Dame uh, stock. I also think the fact that I understand Ohio State's always been fantastic, but if you're talking about the college football playoff era in general, the dominance that Ohio State's been able to have to get in every single year except this one has been huge to, I think, take away some of the storm from Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. They haven't really had that much success so far in the playoff era, and I think it's starting to hurt them. Mm -hmm. All right, Notre Dame checking at number seven. Number six, we have the Oklahoma Sooners. Been in college football realm since 1895. 77 consensus All-Americans, six Heisman Trophy winners, three national titles under one head coach alone, and Bud Wilkinson. This is a fantastic program. And now they can state their claim is having the quarterback who is Argue, who not really an argument anymore, was the greatest statistical quarterback in the history of college football in Baker Mayfield, the number one quarterback rating quarterback ever in college Thank you football. for throwing statistical in there. Yes, I statistical quarterback. That. No, because he's still Tebow. He's still Tebow. <laughs> I can't just thought that we were going to have an argument there. But no, it, it's Oklahoma. It's just, you know, the, the kings of the Big 12. They've dominated for such a long time in, the, in that conference and the many changings that the Big 12 has gone through. I, I love watching this Oklahoma team. I can't wait to see what they're going to be able to do under Lincoln, Lincoln Riley for the next couple years. Obviously, Bob Stoops was a huge name, but up until Sean Lewis got hired at Kent State from Syracuse, Lincoln Riley was the youngest head coach in the country for Oklahoma, which is a massive accomplishment for anyone. I can't wait to see what they do under him. Hey, are they going to make it eight national titles this year when they win it this oh, season? Brent, I think there Brent, you go. Our producer, Brent Scott, is just going to start vomiting <laughs> behind the screen. <laughs> Hope, hopefully the, uh, the Oklahoma fans <laughs> in, the, in the comments appreciate that one. Give me a, bo a boomer sooner. Boomer in sooner. Boomer sooner. All right, Oklahoma rounds out the bottom five top coaching spots in college football. At number five, we have the Michigan Wolverines. You know, Harbaugh is currently the coach at that program, and it is an obvious reason why he loves to do that. Play in the big house with a fan 
fantastic fan base. And I think the, the them being outfitted by Jordan kind of put a big stamp on that program. Because if you look at Jordan and the different athletes and schools that they sponsor, it's kind of them stamping elite onto a program. Uh, Oklahoma was, is a Jordan brand now as well. So them getting that is huge for them. Because I think especially among the, uh, the younger athletic crowd, the Jordan brand is such a, a huge thing for them. But at the same time, you know, now that they have Harbaugh there, and we're obviously talking about coaching spots, but I think him being there just vaulted up even more. I'm pretty surprised that we have him only at five, but they've had so many, they've taken so many college coaches, and like we said in the intro, they just spat them out. Maybe they've been bad hires, maybe a couple things happened here. We know uh, our Chat Sports CEO, James Yoder, loves talking about how they almost got less miles, but at the same time, they got their guy. And all this crazy talk about maybe the Colts are coming to get Jim Harbaugh or any NFL job, Michigan fans, it's not going to happen. Jim Harbaugh might as well have a lifetime contract with that school. I, I think the seven years of Brady Hoke and Rich Rod where Michigan was just not a good program outside of maybe one, the, the 1-11 win year under Brady Hoke, I think that does hurt them, especially in some of the eyes of the younger recruits who think of Michigan as, oh, the team that played in the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl that one year. Like, I don't, I don't know if it's the same level of recognition for some of the current recruits as uh, the older generation tends to have. This is still a fantastic program, though, in Michigan. I, I think they are well-deserving of the number five spot. And 73% overall win percentage is absolutely fantastic. And you guys know what's also fantastic? What? Man Crates. Nice. Man Crates is the best place to get that special guy in your life. Dad, brother, boyfriend, Excuse uncle, doesn't matter. Sees Harris, you? we're not getting no, you I, one. No, I, 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 <laughs> I was trying to be polite. Harris, we're not getting you one. <laughs> we're not getting you one, Harris. I'm sorry. I know you really want one because they are just so awesome. Tom, I know what you love, and that is that meat man crate. What yeah. can you tell us about oh, it? Oh, it's delicious. My favorite is, is the bacon bouquet. There's also one of salami. Incredible. And there's also the, the, the jerky, the, the created jerky, delicious. The gator jerky. Highly recommend. Bison jerky to exotic meats in the Man Crates jerky crate. So get one today for that special guy in your life at mancrates.com. Man Crates. All right, let's keep on rolling through the top college football coaching positions. And at number four is the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, a true football school, probably one of the biggest names in college football, yet they check in at number four. Well, and I think one of the great things about this is that it's kind of like with the Patriots. You know, they just. Nick Saban's the best coach in college football. Everything comes back to the oh, Patriots. Oh, give me a Harris. break. Give me a this break. This is college football. Dude. And that's why I said Nick Saban's the best coach in college football. And it's not even like it's an argument anymore. Like you can say, oh, this guy or this guy. Maybe it's our – no, it's it's Nick Saban. Nick Saban is the best coach in college football. What he's been able to do with this program is fantastic. I think the name brand of it is so incredible as well. Up until this year, they're always in the top three in recruiting classes. This year they still might be. We'll see what happens in February. But – just so many national titles, so many times they've been on a big stage with all of these great players. And to be totally honest, they've done it with pretty average quarterback play, which tells you that the team as a whole has been able to do it for them. I'm sorry, I'm not considering A.J. McCarron a good quarterback. I'm not, you're sure. not going to do it. So I, I love this program. I think they only can go up from here as well. That's what's incredible. I think it's interesting to look back at the Alabama history. Yeah, the Bear Bryant years were the Bear Bryant years, even though Alabama claims way more national titles than they actually have, but that's okay. There have also been some clunker years. I mean, who else remembers Mike Shula? Remember when, when Dennis Francone was there for two years and left? Yeah, that was kind of weird. Mike DeBose like, so Alabama isn't flawless when it comes to their, to their program, but I don't think any program is in general. I do think maybe Alabama suffers a little bit from expectations. Like, if, if, the, Alabama, if the Alabama job comes open, would, would Alabama actually get the best available coach of, of any program, or would it be, you know what, I don't want to deal with that pressure and those expectations? Mm -hmm. And I think that actually may be a reason why they're ranked a little bit lower. All right, Alabama chiming in at number four. At number three, we have the Texas Longhorns. They're down there in Austin, Texas. Okay. And you guys, they have their own TV network. They do have their own TV network. It's and, fantastic. And do you know what? The TV network is actually pretty good. Shout out from the production side of Chat Sports. Shout out to the, uh, to, uh, the Longhorn Network for also being a fantastically produced network. But at the same time, the, it's Texas. But one of the other things about it that we've seen in the program it's very difficult to be good in Texas because just like with, um, excuse me, just like what we were talking about with Florida State, Texas is in that same boat now. TCU is now a force to be reckoned with. Baylor is trying to come back around with Matt Rule. Texas Tech with Cliff Kingsbury has now been a name program for the past couple of years. And the names can continue to go. So it, it's interesting to see what the Longhorns are going to be able to do going forward. They have a fantastic recruiting class coming in recently, but their recent success has not been fantastic, though. 
I think they found their coach. I think Tom Herman's the guy. I want to give him one more year before I put that, yes, you are the coach of the future on him. Well, the, the last couple of years at Texas have been really bad. They had, they, they've won nine games at most. This after Mac Brown went on a string of almost 10 straight years with double-digit wins. The Mac Brown era didn't, didn't end that well for Texas. The Charlie Strong era went in the wrong direction kind of throughout. I do think Tom Herman is, is the right guy, by the way. My big concern here with Texas, and I, I think there's the brand as well, I think they're three because they have the facilities. They've got everything you can want in a job outside of the recent success. Do you think one of the reasons they're so high on this list is how much wealth of recruits they have in the state of I Texas? Think, I, I, I think wealth in general. I think recruits and just <laughs> overall money. The football program was valued at over $800 million a couple years ago. That That's most, more than several NFL teams. I was teams. about to say, like, that is yeah. almost a billion-dollar like, franchise. Texas is rolling in the money for their football program. There, there isn't a reason why they shouldn't be one of the top of jobs out there. And again, we've said this also about a couple programs. It's just so volatile as well. When Texas is bad, boy, are they bad. And boy, is when is Texas bad, is it just flaunted on a national stage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People love it when Texas is bad. So yes, it's, it's been kind but, of an ugly couple of years. But then we can say that Texas is back, even though they're not back. <laughs> they're it's, always it's back. Everyone's back. The U.S. is back. Texas T is back. Time is a flat circle. Um, they're always back. <laughs> USC is back. It's a good day to be a college football fan. There you go. All right. Chiming at number two, we have Florida. And they are one of the richest recruiting grounds in America, hands down. Don't even want to hear about it. That's probably why they're so up on this list. And I... This one for me is kind of, I kind of question in Florida at number two because I understand while they are in this state that is so great at recruiting, just like with Florida State, they're in the same boat. There's so much competition to get those guys in Florida to go to the University of Florida and not go to other schools. We've seen the Miami's being able to take a big chunk out of the state. And we've also, you know, we've mentioned all the other Florida schools as well, been able to really build off of how great of a state it is. But I'm excited to see what Dan Mullen's able to do with this program and kind of rekindle the, illustri the illustriousness that is the Florida program because they've kind of lost their luster the past couple years. I don't think Jim McElwain really did he that. He was a weird fit. Yeah, it was a weird fit. I think Dan Mullen is a great fit. I think they just need a season to really cement themselves back as a national player before they really get behind like Florida State might do for the next couple of years. And this, again, this isn't a list of like the most iconic programs right. in the Miami Sands one. These are the best spots if, if the job would come open. And I think if, if you're a coach and you look at Florida, you're like, oh man, they, yes, got, they have the, the easy recruiting base. They're mm -hmm. the national name that can go expand beyond that, just the, the backyard stuff. They have the recent success. They have the facilities. They have the money. They've got everything you could possibly want in a job, plus a little bit more reasons to success than a place like Texas and less pressure than like a place like Alabama. Except Chip Kelly did say no. He wanted to, to stay on the West Coast. That's fair. I'm just... I'm just saying, he Florida did yes, get a big did. fat no from the white whale. So it, I think it's a knock on the program. All right. Fair. Florida coming at number two and at number one to probably nobody's surprise. The Ohio State Buckeyes, they currently have Urban Meyer as their head coach. Obviously a great recruiting factor. But you guys, this franchise, $1.5 billion. It's yeah. not fair. That's a lot. That's like, a lot you of You have money. all have the money, that? right? Can we all have some of that? Yeah. $1.5 billion. I, That's most and probably, what, 60% of NFL teams, if not more. I'd also argue that the amount of money that they've been, that uh, their alumni make in the NFL is probably double the amount of any other the school because it just house. seems that they – pump out NFL talent no matter what decade you're in. There's always big time players coming out of Ohio State. They have dominated recruiting in, in certain parts of this country for such a long time. And I also think that they're just, they are the team to beat inside of the Big Ten. They've, they've played big brother to that conference for a very long time. And I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. We saw Urban Meyer take a year off and basically wait for the Ohio State job to open up because he knew that he was going to get it, and he got it. And it was, it's a perfect fit. He's going to be there forever. So I love, I love what this Ohio State program has been able to do from an NFL talent perspective. I think that their, their program's only going to get better. They have a great recruiting class coming in this year, and they're probably going to have another great one coming in next year. They do need a new quarterback, though. I'm, I'm a little unsure about Dwayne Haskins. I think he's got upside. I, no, is JT Boy? Is think, JT Barrett coming back for his I think, ninth I think, year? I think he's got Ohio State? four more years. Still, still. four more. It's four uh, more I, years I, I thought JT Barrett. So. I, I, it's so weird. It feels like he's, he just got there. Look, when we, when you're we putting together this list, we're, we're checking off all of our boxes. Okay, w you know what could you possibly want when you're taking a, a new job? Ohio State was in the top two of like every possible option: facilities, the money involved, the location, all of it. The the the, the, the iconic stuff like the horseshoe and the helmets. Ohio State has everything you could possibly want in a job. 
there isn't as and Harris likes to you've mentioned this a lot the recruiting in in fighting in the state. What were you try, trying to say that uh, Kent State's in Ohio, right? Yes, they are. Well, they're they're not a no. a big threat to Ohio no. State. Come on, neither is UC. So it like in, in, in for the state of Ohio, it Miami is Ohio? Ohio State. It's weird when you're not a, a Buckeye fan, I, uh, which what? I can confirm because I'm we, from Ohio. And not yeah, Ohio. I was about to say as a, as a Miami it Ohio alumni, gets annoying. <laughs> uh, there are more Buckeye fans uh, watching the games at the bar than there were watching the games at the stadium for Miami.